Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar about the about motion management QA with the Delta for Hexa Motion. This presentation will be for 20 minutes, including the Q&A session. And it is my pleasure to present to you my colleague Inge Marvibari, who will be doing this presentation. Inge Marvibari is one of the co-founders of Scandidus and has been in the radiotherapy industry since over 30 years. So over to you, Ingemar. Thank you, Selga. It's my pleasure. Uh, so I will start the presentation and uh, then you will not have the pleasure to, to view my face anymore here. <clears throat> the theme for this uh, presentation is do you treat the tumor with precision or do you treat what happens to be in the beam? Maybe a little bit provocative uh, question, but uh, I think it's quite fair, which you will see in a shortly. So this is uh, what I will go through. This is uh, very briefly about motion management, uh, ex some experience with tumor tracking and how can you make QA and conclusions. So tumor motion that, uh, <clears throat> To define first uh, the the tumor, the tumor volume, and then you also decide to have a margin for a clinical um, uh, clinical target volume, where you have some um, uh, smaller metastasis and things that you would like to uh, to treat. But then you also add something called planned target volume, which is due to uncertainties and also the motion of the tumor during the, uh, the the treatment session now of course you can see that compared with the the gross target or the clinical target it's not uh, really desirable to, to de treat that much there can be things in the way that uh, is not uh, really so, so good to to irradiate so we would like to shrink the PTV and we can do that by mainly two uh, uh, two methods gating where you treat only when the the tumor is in place in the center of the beam or tumor tracking where you you actually then follow the uh, the um, the tumor motion and thereby you can uh, reduce then the uh, uh, the, the the margins quite uh, well so some experiences uh, one of the well actually i would say that the first user of the hexa motion that i will speak about later here was uh, at sydney university or it actually was uh, in uh, they used it actually in Copenhagen first, but that was part of that group. There was quite a large group in uh, in Copenhagen, in Aarhus, in Sydney, and it was also originally at Stanford. And <clears throat> they provided this uh, graph here, where you can see how they could, um, uh, so to speak, restore the uh, the dose volume histograms to uh, the original planned by uh, implementing tracking so they also provided this very nice figure this is the the plan uh, and uh, then what they actually uh, delivered without an, any tracking due to the motion and of course this is not really uh, something we would like to see uh, it's quite scaring actually but then when they implemented tracking, they managed to do, do this uh, restore almost uh, identical to what uh, the, the, the static situation would be. Uh, then there was also a group in Zurich who made tests with uh, both MLC and couch tracking and uh, show that they could get much better results implementing th those things. Uh, there was also a multi uh, um, uh, a multi site comparison. I think there were like uh, uh, ten institutions that uh, 
made with, with different kinds of machines and different kinds of um, of approaches where they but it was basically it is uh, some kind of uh, of tracking and their conclusion was that uh, the the real-time adaption significantly significantly outperforming non-adaptive delivery methods and recently we had uh, last year uh, uh, in montefiore where they implemented their uh, red exact or where they uh, rather made an initial evaluation of the red exact synchronous system from accuray and here you can see quite interesting results how the comparing the 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 second and the third uh, column where you can see how the uncorrected goes down quite considerably uh, but the corrected it's almost at 100 percent and this is the, the gamma pass rate that they're looking at so they did that for different kind of motions here when they implemented that so i think we have made the case that uh, tumor tracking is effect effective so how can you make your the qa then well you need some kind of a, a moving platform and you need a phantom and the, we have here the phantom plus and the moving platform is uh, the hexa motion and you can also here see the uh, a trolley a special trolley for this that allows you to move it over to the couch without lifting which makes it very easy and quick to to uh, uh, put the set up the, the phantom on the on the couch what you see here is for uh, typical c arm uh, accelerators there is also uh, another version for board type uh, accelerators where you don't uh, have the same space for for the uh, for, for the the trolley So first a little bit about the Phantom Plus. It has 1,069 detectors. They are one millimeter in diameter. The in in the inner area of six uh, times six centimeters, uh, there is a five millimeter pitch, and the outer area there is a 10 millimeter pitch. And we also measure with a time resolution and uh, it's not a sampling it's a it is actually we we measure each dose pulse individually and then we put them together into packages that corresponds to the uh, to the control points of the delivery and that is also the reason why we can be so accurate uh, with this uh, measurement then a little bit on the hexa motion you can see here when it's uh, laid out on, on the couch and uh, also mounted it has a range of uh, plus minus four centimeters in the three mi main <laughs> directions it can roll plus minus 10 degree and it can tilt uh, Three, plus three degrees minus six degrees the position and accuracy is better than 0.5 millimeters it's actually quite difficult to measure it we, we've uh, had also customers saying that they test it and uh, they they don't have any better method than uh, to compare with them so but uh, they have seen uh, 0.3 millimeters at least there is no noticeable lag in the system so even if there are uh, respiratory motions that are very fast it uh, can handle that uh, then for the when you're doing this with a uh, with a the accurate uh, synchrony system 
we have also made a special quarter for uh, for the uh, for the phantom where you can put in the accurate ball cube insert and the ball cube insert consists of well it's a it's a cube but uh, the ball inside that that is uh, a tissue equivalent uh, material so uh, you can clearly see the see it on an imaging system as it, uh, if you can if you can uh, see soft tissue then you can see, detect it but they also have uh, markers inside and that you can see here then uh, is a screenshot from the uh, accuray system where you, you see the uh, the ball the the ball inside the cube uh, and then you also see that you have some fiducials there. But they also have uh, another method, and that is uh, using a lead tracking. So, so it's more like, um, I would say, a more realistic situation, maybe what you can track. So it, they make a correlation there between the, um, the respiratory motion of the, the, the chest wall, uh, up and down movement. Uh, and you can see that there is a, a seven dimension stage here that uh, is used for that, that moves up and, and down like the, the chest would move. So in uh, in shortly the 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 process is that you import the tumor motion trajectory from uh, 4D CT or it can be uh, uh, other systems as well as uh, surface scanning or from uh, uh, from the brain lab system. And then you set up the hexta motion and the phantom plus on the on the couch, and then you run the plan as a static plan, and uh, and then you run the plan again with motion and uh, with compensation implemented, and then you can compare then the the dose deviations, uh, distance to agreement, and and the gamma indexes, and if everything is okay there when you you compare the the static and the uh, and the the motion uh, condition then you should basically get just a, a single bar then on the on the index there um, and that's also a very nice uh, feature with the delta 4 system is that you can you can choose with uh, what you want to compare very freely. You can uh, choose to, to compare with the original plan, but you can also co compare measurements with measurements. So uh, it's very easy then to see how well you can restore the uh, the the, uh, <clears throat> the original plan with. Uh, with your compensation and then you can of course then apply different types of compensation uh, i guess you have uh, several parameters to to play around with in that optionally you can also compare the dose volume histograms so conclusion yeah real-time tumor tracking system have shown to be effective uh, there are also now commercial systems available. However, there is, with all these degrees of freedom, it can be quite intimidating for the users when implementing these solutions. Uh, you, you would really want to do QA, uh, but the good news is then that it, it's now possible to do efficient QA of these treatment technologies. Well, thank you so much, Ingemar, for that uh, nice presentation. Uh, and please, just as uh, my colleague Ingemar said, um, just go ahead and type your questions and uh, 
uh, Ingmar can try his best to, to, to answer them for you. Let me see. That's an easy one. What type of machines does the hexa motion work together with? Well, basically all all accelerators, except for the MR Linux, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, all CRM uh, Linux, all, all also all board type of Linux works with. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, which information can you get from using the Delta Four Phantom together with the Hexa Motion system? Well, that is basically, uh, as I say, you can uh, get the uh, the gamma index. You can uh, compare the gamma index, and I think that is what uh, ninety nine percent of all users are doing. Um, and and you of course can compare those uh, deviations as well. But uh, also you can uh, can get comparison of uh, the wages and see how the the uh, the volume is uh, actually then covered. So not not only the the gamma index, but uh, to be honest, if you have uh, hundred percent uh, of the gamma index, uh, then uh, uh, I think the, most people wouldn't even bother to, to look at, at the rest of it. Um, there is another question that this one could be tricky. How long is the setup time for measurements? Yeah, that uh, is a little bit tricky to answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> basically, the setup time, if you look at that uh, separately, that is uh, about the same as for uh, for uh, the for the, the for the standard phantom. Uh, you you put roll it in over the couch and then you do some uh, small uh, alignment of, of uh, the, the of the phantom when it's on the on the couch to to line up with the with the laser lines. Now with the uh, <coughs> Uh, with, with the hexa motion, you can also use the hexa motion then to to find adjust the position. So you set your origin with uh, with that. So that time doesn't really be, make up any difference. What makes a difference though is that you have also to acquire before you uh, doing the QA. You have to acquire the uh, the the motion trajectory from uh, somewhere from uh, 4D CT or whatever. And uh, then of course you add also the time because you you have to to run at least two QA uh, plans uh, with and without uh, motion. How often do you have to do those measurements? Oh, that's a that's a good question. I think that uh, I think of course it varies a lot because uh, the the situation in different clinics are, are very different. I think that it mainly is in the beginning before you implement the uh, these things uh, the the uh, tumor tracking that you you would uh, like to do all this. Uh, verification and validation of the method. It might be that you have to play around a little bit with uh, different approaches for the motion management, set different parameters uh, before you're satisfied with it. So I would say there is a, uh, a time, maybe a couple of months or, or a month at least, where you do a lot of measurements with this, but then uh, I think it's uh, more up to the clinic to decide if it's something they will do uh, on specific cases or if it, they will do it on uh, all cases or, or well, what they want to do. Um, it, I also suppose it will vary a lot about how uh, much that 
that uh, people are doing tumor tracking. Uh, at some point you have to decide then how, for which patient groups that it's uh, relevant to do it. And of course it, it is in the, in the regions where you have uh, big motions of the, of the tumor. Okay, thank you so much, Ingmar. I have gotten another one here, which is um, how do you calibrate the delta four? Um, the question maybe is not so specific. Ah, okay. But can you maybe tell uh, something, Ingmar? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I'll try to, to answer that anyway. Uh, there is no calibration for the hexamotion itself that is, uh, uh, doesn't need that. Uh, there is a, the calibration that you need to do for the delta four phantom that is um, uh, very limited for the user before it the uh, delta four leaves the factory. It the individual sensitivity of the detector. Uh, is calibrated. So uh, you get uh, a file together or a calibration file with, with uh, those factors. We also do uh, directional uh, calibration of the, of the detectors. Now this is a generic um, uh, calibration. You don't need to do it for, uh, for different energies or, or, or so. It's, uh, it is uh, the same. Uh, what you need to do then as a user is you need to do an absolute calibration on your own accelerator, on the way that you have calibrated uh, the accelerator. And that is quite simple. We, you can insert a, an ion chamber in the phantom. And uh, then you take basically two measurements with uh, the uh, with the ice uh, with the iron chamber offset from the the central axis and then you make a, a third irradiation in uh, in 45 degrees in between those uh, uh, iron chamber radiations and then you <coughs> the that uh, offset or that the uh, um, chamber has that will then correspond to to a detector on the on the detector boards on each detector boards. So so that is uh, basically three uh, three simple shots for. Um, uh, and you can do that for uh, actually for different field sizes as well, uh, but uh, typically 10 by 10, or, and then you can do it uh, for 5 by 5 and 20 by 20, I think. And that has to be done all then for all the energies that you have on your accelerators, which typically is used, the, you have two <laughs> photon energies. Thank you, Ingmar. I think you covered the whole thing. <laughs> uh, so that hopefully you are satisfied with the answers. If not, please find the information uh, about uh, where to send your uh, questions on our website, the delta4family.com website or scandidus.com, and you can then navigate from there. So thank you so much, everyone, for your time, and thank you for joining us.